Uh, this is a church that I'm the pastor of, and we're so we're so honored to have you here to celebrate Rose Allen Brooks Bank Alexander. Um, I have known Rosie for over 48 years, and uh, she and I were very dear friends. I never quite understood the relationship because she was always so fashionable and always dressed nicely and always did things so well. And I was just the opposite. Now, remember a time I had put together an outfit and I realized that I was ripped underneath the, the arm and it was a black top so, and I couldn't find a safety pin. That's why I was laughing about the safety pin. So I took a straight pin and pinned it because I wanted to wear that outfit. And so Rosie came up and she put her arms around me and she hugged me and she said, what's that? I said, it's a straight pin. She says, wow. You're the most courageous woman I've ever <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about, you know, why don't you sew it or anything else. She always just totally accepted me the way I was. And I think that's one of the greatest things you can say about somebody, is they just accept you the way you are. And all through the things that we did together, and the places we went together, and the stories that we would share, was incredible. One thing about Rose Ellen that you'll notice, if you please have a chance later on to read the memories of Rosie, Rose, Rose Ellen never said goodbye. Whatever party that I had, I turn around and say, where's Rose Ellen? And she just left. And sometimes she left her own parties by just going to bed. <laughs> okay, and it was one of those things that when I was talking to Brooke, and she said, well, do you think maybe she would have said goodbye? And I said, never. she never said goodbye never. before she left a party. Never. So we're here to just let us know how much we loved her. That's one of the things that people don't seem to realize, that a celebration of life is an honoring of the living. Because where Rosie is is fine. We're the ones that are going through a difficult time with it. So there, that is part of the celebration, is being here, being able to talk to each other. Please tell stories, because Rosie had so many stories. I want to, before I turn the mic over to my wonderful granddaughter, uh, Vanessa, I wanted to tell one that I thought was so fun, because I, I saw Rosie one day, and probably she was in her mid-30s. And I said, how are you doing? She's oh. I woke up this morning feeling like a teenager. Pity I couldn't find one. <laughs> I just, I, I'll always remember that about, about Roselle and that wonderful gift of humor. And no matter what she was going through. One other little aside, I mentioned to a friend of mine, Ronnie Grigsby. Some of you might have met Ronnie. I think, Brad, you met Ronnie. He's six foot five, black dude who is, has a heart of gold. And uh, I told him about Rosellen, that she was the first woman I knew that was in my group that married a black man. And I said, and Finus was quite a character. And he said, Finus Alexander? From Tulare? And I said, yeah. He said, oh my God, my cousin married one of his sons. Wow. <laughs> yeah, talk about that. Okay, Rosie. <laughs> because Sinus passed in 2017. So here, the, whatever they are, and I'm sure they're both up to doing something kind of exciting and interesting, along with everybody else. Vanessa is going to read a, a wonderful prayer that was submitted to me by Barbara Snow. Oh, that's you. <laughs> Are you the one with the glasses, or is that your dad? That's my dad. Okay. Hey! Hey, y'all. Um, this is a prayer for peace by Ellen Bass, and it was sent over, and one thing um, that Rosie discussed with a lot of us multiple times was just her hope for, for peace, and ultimately, um, that's what this is about. So... Pray to whomever you kneel to, Jesus nailed to his wooden or plastic cross, his suffering face bent to kiss you, Buddha still under the bow tree in scorching heat, Adonai, Allah, 
Raise your arms to Mary that she may lay her palm on our brows. To Shekinah, queen of heaven and earth, to Anana in her strip descent. Then pray to the bus driver who takes you to work. On the bus, pray for everyone riding that bus, for everyone riding buses all over the world. Drop some silver and pray. Waiting in line for the movies, for the ATM, for your latte and croissant, offer your plea. Make your eating and drinking a supplication. Make your slicing of carrots a holy act. Each translucent layer of the onion a deeper prayer. To hawk or wolf or the great whale, pray. Bow down to terriers and shepherds and Siamese cats, fields of artichokes and elegant strawberries. Make the brushing of your hair a prayer, every strand in its own voice singing in the choir on your head. As you wash your face, the water slipping through your fingers, a prayer, water, softest thing on earth, gentleness that wears away rock. Making love, of course, is already prayer, skin and open mouths worshiping that skin, the fragile cases that we are poured into. If you're hungry, pray. If you're tired, pray to Gandhi and Dorothy Day. Shakespeare, Sappho, Sojourner <laughs> Truth. When you walk to your car, to the mailbox, to the video store, let each step be a prayer that we all keep our legs, that we do not blow off anyone else's legs or crush their skulls. And if you're riding on a bicycle or a skateboard in a wheelchair, each revolution of the wheels a prayer as the earth revolves. Less harm, less harm, less harm. And as you work, typing with a new manicure or tiny palm tree painted on one pearlescent nail, or delivering soda or drawing good blood into rubber-capped vials, twirling pizzas, with each breath in, take in the faith of those who have believed when belief seemed foolish, who persevered. With each breath out, cherish. Pull weeds for peace, turn over in your sleep for peace. Feed the birds each shiny seed that spills onto the earth, another second of peace. Wash your dishes, call your mother, drink wine. Shovel leaves or snow or trash from your sidewalk. Make a path. Fold a photo of a dead child around your visa card. Scoop your holy water from the gutter. Gnaw your crust. Mumble along like a crazy person, stumbling your prayer through the streets. Amen. All women. I'd like to know one of those phrases that you just read off really resonated. Let's hear it. About Rosie. Drink one. Yes. <laughs> I must call your mother. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that whole idea, she was religious in her own way. And, and if she talked to you and you were Jewish, great. If she talked to you and you followed uh, whatever path, fine. As long as you were working for peace. And now I'd like to introduce my son, Bob. As Rosie called him, Robert. Robert. Just want to start off saying thanks, Mom, for the lovely place and everybody that got everything here together from Corky doing the pamphlet and the music and the kids doing the food and Brooke doing the booze, which is probably the most important for me, <laughs> and everything else. But Rosie was a dynamic woman. She now you have to speak into Rosie was a dynamic <laughs> woman. She was a, everything to everybody and even more some to some people. And you saw the good side of Rosie. She loved you and give you her last dollar. You got on the wrong side of Rosie. It wasn't so good. His finest could tell you when she slammed his fingers in the trunk. Woohoo! <laughs> and then she had to get somebody to get the keys to let him out. <laughs> but I met Rosie. I remember my mom introduced her after she had her fire and a few Brian Wilson. And she said, yeah, she's making macaroni and cheese. And I thought, great, this will be wonderful. And we'll go over there and it's like, what the hell is this stuff? This isn't macaroni and cheese. Which Brooke so delightfully brought today. But I, yeah, I was used to macaroni and cheese coming out of a box, not, not sitting there coming out of a out of, you know, somebody slaving over it and everything. I spent the last two Thanksgivings with Rosie and she was really happy. She was really happy in her life. She loved living in New York. Hawaii, not so much. She enjoyed visiting Liz and Barb and seeing everybody else. She loved her goddaughter, my daughter Miranda, who's taking care of my grandchildren somewhere hiding around here. She loved speaking on the phone with Dylan and Vanessa. They always brought her light in her life and she'd speak to them. Because there's one thing with Rosie, is you could be truthfully honest with her about any subject. Whether you wanted to talk to her about being in San Francisco, snorting coke, and playing with girls' boobies. She really liked to hear that from Dylan. And always, she'd say, is your son doing okay? Sounds like he's doing great. 
But as Dylan took us out the other day, and we went down and seeing, she was born in San Francisco, and taking us down and showing us where the Hungry Eye was, and showing us the Condor Club, and taking us to Specs, and places she grew up going to. And it was just amazing to say, I can't call that person. Her, her birthday was the 22nd. I can't send her flowers like I did every year. And it's just funny how, just in the last couple of weeks, this time of year, there's just certain things that you cannot do anymore. You can do them in your heart, but it's things you greatly appreciated. And there's things you just learned. You sent her flowers, but you didn't send her a vase. And there was just certain things about her. It was just so spectacular. And she'd take us, we went and saw the Rockettes last year. And, New York City and just going to see new experiences and new things my whole life and meet new and interesting people whether they're gallery owners or just the people in her apartment they were just amazing amazing people and as everybody will have a story about her the one I truly enjoy Philip showed me this thing driving this guy driving around San Francisco I forget his name but but they show him doing the little street by Kansas Street the twistiest road in San Francisco and he's driving down it and there's and I keep on waiting for him to show him driving up Lombard Street or down Lombard Street <coughs> they never showed it and I thought oh, Rosie did that she drove up Lombard Street not too many people I can see it. actually done that so, so that's one of those things she did but amazing woman uh, we put her ashes in a champagne bottle. I thought that was very well what she would truly improve. like. There's some little bottles up there if anybody would like any ashes in her remembrance. We were laughing last night as we were doing that. <laughs> it was truly enjoyable. But everybody here has their own little rosy story. and It's going to be amazing to, to hear them all. And uh, I'll try not to wreck too many of them, the good and the bad and the bad and the ugly, but at the end when you think, um, it's Rosie. She's very much that person nobody is going to have in their life again. And I truly do miss her, and she meant the world to me. And she meant the world to my family. So that's about it. Everybody enjoy the wonderful day, enjoy the flowers, enjoy the wonderful food, and most of all, talk about her. If she was here, she probably wouldn't be here. She'd be over at the bar <laughs> deciding whether I'm going to drink these bubbles or this bubbles or just make me a drink or have me a cocktail or what I'm going to have. And it's one of those things. If you want to have a Manhattan, she just say, Maker's Mark? Yep. I want to have a vodka? No ice? Yep. That's the way we like it. And so enjoy yourself and have a wonderful afternoon and make it a celebration because she was one hell of a woman. Thank you. I think she's chasing you, Bob. <laughs> I, I, I like what you said. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something. Um, this is a time when we do share. And uh, <coughs> there are so many rosy stories that people have. And your rosy story might be completely different because she showed different faces. She was always truly herself. But for me, Rosie and I never went out drinking because I don't drink. But she never told me I should. She never said, well, why don't you drink? She just said, I'm going to. That ability to be herself, no matter what, but showing different people a different face of her was, was an amazing way to live a life. I, I wanted to share one other quick story. Uh, uh, after our, her youngest, Erin, had passed, she didn't want to see anybody. She said, I don't want to see anybody. I'm going to grieve, and I'm going to grieve by myself. I'm going to get drunk, and I'm going to cry, and I'm going to yell at him. And so I, I was with Corky and said, I'm going to go see her. She said she told you not to. I said, I don't care. I'm going to go. So I stopped by the nursery and got a rose bush, and it was called True Love. And I went to her house and knocked on the door, and she opened the door, and she said, oh, it's you. You're the only one I'd let in right now. 
I said, okay. I walked in. I said, this is true love. And she says, well, sure as heck isn't Aaron. He just died. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay. And I said, and she cried, and she drank, and she talked. And then she took and planted the rose bush. And every time she'd get angry with Aaron, she'd pour some of his ashes out and stomp on him. <laughs> and when she stomped on him, she said, then she'd start feeling guilty. So she'd take the hose and she'd spray him. Well, her backyard was such that every time she'd spray them, they'd go right to that rose bush and cling on. She said, you know, that bastard's still running to you. When I'm in your head. <laughs> I had to say, yes, Rosie, he still is. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brooke, do you want to start out with, uh, with the story since you... Um, you don't have to. No, no. I'm, just, I'm just thinking about whether I should tell the one I'm thinking of because it's very personal. <laughs> We're all, I, I have the same problems or so. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but we no, no, would like to put them... It's yeah. personal, but I will put it. Okay. okay, that's great. And then you can put it on the microphone if you don't mind. Come on up. That'd be funny if she, oh, take, if she did that every time. Come on, Brooke. 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 Come on, Brooke
uh, calling somebody who would think that you're crazy, I always had Rosie. You know, no matter how sad I was, no matter how drunk I was, she was always there for me. And that has left just such an emptiness in my life now that I almost don't want to get drunk anymore. <laughs> oh no! Because I can never call Rosie and share that, 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 uh, you know, the joy that you have sometimes, and that love that that's uncensored love. Um, and so I, I really don't know how it's going to be now. I, I really. I don't know how I'm going to live my life without Rosie, because she's been my second mom since I was 14. Um, <coughs> and Dottie has been great, Bob's been great, you know, I've had, I've found so many other people that have stepped up and been wonderful. Um, and I hope that we can build a family together to kind of support it, that have that big hole in our soul, though, that we don't have Rosie anymore. Good. So I met Rosie through Dottie, and I met Dottie through my friend Kathy. And Kathy has a nut in there. And Kathy is uh, getting a video right now that I'm doing. <laughs> you were the daughter. The video's turned on. Oh, oh, the turned on. You were the daughter, and she referred to you, as, to me as your daughter. People used to mistake me and Rosie for sisters. And I didn't ever see a resemblance, but I was always so touched that people... <coughs> and um, Rosie, I spent some of those nights with Rosie. And I do remember one time doing something totally out of character for me, and essentially in pajamas, getting up and going to the 7-Eleven because we ran out of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rosie, I enjoy it. Thanksgiving or Christmas this year in, you're out. You were at some of them. Wonderful meals. Sometimes she was in no shape to join us for eating them after she had. Ah. And Rosie was the, uh, somebody that appealed to her. Somebody I could do museums with, do shows, impressionist shows, going back to New York City was so much more exciting than going to Hawaii. No offense, that was a beautiful <laughs> condo and location, but but we would do shows and and I can think of the last time I met was with her was with my friend Kathy who, and who introduced me to Dottie and Rosie, who I met through Dottie. And they really didn't know each other, and I put them together, and they became close friends. And Yay. She sent, and she kind of spoke some words for me in this, in this write-up that she supplied. That she was a little pissed that she wasn't able to say goodbye. Rosie called me that weekend beforehand. We chatted. We talked about my coming back to New York once I was mobile again, and we'll do a show and dinner, and no. But as my friend wrote so eloquently, one did not argue with Rosie, ever, about anything. You'd lose. You don't even go there. When she had her mind fixed on something, it's done. And we all went, and I, you're a strong woman. I, everybody here's strong personalities. Anybody win an argument with Dottie? Just one? I mean, <laughs> I mean that was true. Anybody win an argument with Rosie? Did anybody go up against her? Not that night, but she would always call and apologize. <laughs> so, um, she, she, I'm still alive today. I can't kind of attribute it to Rosie because I was going through a really rough time. Uh, a horrible event had occurred and I was just hanging on by my fingernails. <coughs> but I was getting tough it out and Rosie came to visit and she helped me out during this rough period and she came to visit <coughs> me and we're sitting on my back deck and she asked was I getting help and I said no I'm just gonna tough this out and she just said well how's that work? <laughs> <laughs> and this light bulb went over my head and it was like I knew 
I had a true friend that's just <coughs> telling me uh, the truth. And I said, you're right. And I went and got the help that I needed and, and got through this horrible period. And it was because somebody who really gave a damn about me called me on my bullshit and, and I listened. And I don't know what I'm going to do without Dottie and my I, I Dottie and uh, Rosie in my life because they're, they're both, they both are so interconnected. I met them at the same time and they became part of this family I didn't have at that time. And and if if um, uh, I uh, can provide any support to somebody going through this hard time of having this hole in my life, uh, this was my sister. This was your second mom. This was to everybody. I, I, you have a hole. Um, you're going to try and go and fill it, and um, I hope that uh, when December comes around in 2020 that we'll think of each other and remember this was a time of year that Rosie was a part of our life, either because we were spending holidays with her or just calling her. And, and, and I just um, know that I'll find a way because she used to help me out with going and doing some things, uh, making Christmas nice for some foster kids or at birthday time. She was there. And if I had known that her money was, which is one of her triggers, I wouldn't have allowed her to do it. I just thought, hey, things had turned around. You know, she's, but, but I am so glad she had New York. She thrived in New York. That was her place. Yes, she was born in San Francisco, but at heart, she was a New Yorker. So, uh, it was nice to go and come and do some healing with other people who knew Rosie and, and thank you. <laughs> at the booms, I was about 15. That was like a whole different scene for me. So, uh, But anyways, I met her and several other women there and I thought, wow, I'm not going to stay away from these ladies because they are not kind. <laughs> and right. I was young and a hippie girl and I was just trying to hold on to my man. You know, I don't know what was going on there. I saw lots of weird stuff going on there. But anyways, over the years, um, Rosie was kind of uh, someone that was pretty much no bullshit. And I really love that. I'm a very no bullshit person for people that know me. Um, not time to uh, sit around there and beat around the bush. Uh, that's me. And um, I would have conversations with her about that. And she was always, uh, her, and, her and Big Bart were always very like, we know exactly where we stand with you. And I was like, is there something wrong with that? And I go, no, it's very clear. And I said, I like it too, because I knew where I stood with them. <clears throat> and um, that's why I have just an interesting, fun <coughs> story. Uh, one time, the twins and Miranda and I were um, on one of our July adventures, because Rosie used to uh, pay for Miranda to go to Stanford swim camp. And uh, it was a pretty big treat because, you know, that wasn't something we were going to provide for her. We told her to go to the pool. Um, so, anyways, we were we drove from uh, we were living in Oregon, and we drove, and um, the twins were probably about I don't know, you guys seven, eight, I don't know, and um, 
you know, we just pulled in 10 hours, you know, over the Bay Bridge, yay, everything's great. And pull all our stuff into the house, up that freaking, you know, luggage, and the kids had all their crap. And <clears throat> Rosie and I went down to the market to buy something, and we were having the famous macaroni and cheese as well. <laughs> and, um, and the subject came up about Erin. This is very personal as well. And um, she goes, I'm just so still pissed off at that kid. And I go, yeah, little fucker, dying on us, killing himself. You know, we were just like, we were at it, drinking, doing whatever. And uh, we talked about hard drugs, you know, and how hard drugs really had affected a lot of us. And we could talk about that with Rosie. She didn't, she didn't shy away from the things she did. She wasn't always proud of them. But she said she did them, and, you know, and uh, I said, well, I just thought you knew what was going on with Aaron, you know, and she said, how the hell would I know that? And I go, well, you know, she goes, I didn't know he was doing street drugs, and she goes, and she goes well, he told us, and she goes, get the hell out of my house right now, and I'm just sitting there frozen. I'm like, I thought Bob had mentioned this to her, get the hell out of here. Get your kids and get the hell out of my house right now. I look at the kids and they're like, okay. Blunk, 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 all the luggage down the thing. And we get, I mean, I was, and she's calling Bob and I'm, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I, we're getting out. You know, we're leaving. I'm stressed. And he's like, okay. And she goes, you, you sure you don't want to stay? I said, no, the kids are packed. They're ready to go. We're on our way. And so we went. We left and uh, showed up at Dottie's. There's all this food around because this was always when it was Miranda's birthday and it was July. And Dottie says, well, you're fine. You're here. Just, you know, here's Costco food. You know, the kids are fine. Like, well, I knew I was going to have to see her in like less than 48 hours. And I was scared. You know, it was the first time I had really had any type of like confrontation with her. And we were going to Emma's birthday party up in the mountains. And Bob got in town and we went. And um, I, was, I was scared. I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to tear my head off, you know. And I'm going to be at Emma's, and everybody's going to be there. And I just, and she came up to me, and she had Michael there. And um, she came up to me, and she goes, I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> and I was just like, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, I thought I was going to say, Get the hell out of Emma's house now. <laughs> she goes, I so, you know, and she just admitted how she had treated us poorly and she screwed up and she was emotional and it was just a breath of fresh air. I talked to her on Saturday. Bob and I were driving up to LA. Sorry. And we drove up there, and like I said, I got a call her. She sent us this beautiful Moulin Rouge picture when Bob and I went to Moulin Rouge that she treated us to. She says, you can't go to Moulin Rouge and not have a private waiter. I'm like, I hadn't even thought of that. <laughs> I didn't know I could do it. Oh, no, you've got to do it this way. It's fantastic. Let me take care of that. All right. So I called her, and I was talking to her, and she was really at peace. You know, I, I felt like, you know, just like you all said, you know, she pretty much said how she felt. And um, <clears throat> I was thanking her for sending the Moulin Rouge, and I knew, I knew that the end was coming. I knew that, I knew that, and it was scary, but I knew it, and I just didn't want to have that conversation with her, but I knew I had to thank her. And I knew when I hung up with her, because as Dottie said, she never said goodbye, ever. It was never goodbye. It was never bye-bye or anything. And when I hung up with her, she said, bye-bye. And I told Bob, I'm never going to talk to her again. And Bob called when the New York Police Department called him. And I knew I had lost someone so dear to me who allowed me to be a bitch, who loved me for whatever mood I was in. And I could always call her and look for guidance and just look for love. She gave me that. She gave Bob that. I knew Bob had someone that he could, like he said, not be judged. And I appreciated that. So.
Thank you. I just want to cry. It's okay. <laughs> Dylan and Miranda were always way closer with Rosie than me. Miranda is her goddaughter. Dylan lived with her. But my first solid, <laughs> Dylan lived with her and they were very close. They shared San Francisco. My first solid memory of Rosie was eating something I did not like at her home and then being told to leave, which is really similar to my mom's story. It's the same one. <laughs> But anyways, um, I always loved Rosie, and I do always remember something I carry because of her, and I know that my sister does as well, is we're not like, either of us are super big hosts, but little things like always put something into a pan, or always have a nice table setting, these are things that Rosie taught us, and my memory was actually pretty recent, and we went to have Thanksgiving with her in Hawaii, and... Philip had probably been around my boyfriend for like five or six years at this point, and he was like, um, it's Thanksgiving, I want deviled eggs. And I was like, you know, like I really think Rosie kind of has it all figured out, and like I'm not about to mess with her eating situation, and he was like, well, it's Thanksgiving, and like normally we have deviled eggs. And I was like, mm, yeah, I just think we're gonna like not do that. And she must have overheard this or something, and she came in and she's like, so when are you making deviled eggs? And I was like, what? And she's like, Philip said that you guys have deviled eggs at every holiday, and I was like, oh, I didn't want to, like, mess with it, and she was like, Vanessa, make deviled eggs, and I was like, all right, and she's like, I have all the things, and I was like, oh, and she's like, we're going to have the Thanksgiving that everybody wants to have, and I was like, cool, so uh, we made deviled eggs, we had a lovely Thanksgiving, and I haven't told Philip no to deviled eggs ever since. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right on. My story. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else? Mine wasn't deviled eggs. <laughs> it was lemon bars and oh. 40 garlic chicken. <laughs> lemon bars. Lemon bars, yeah. Right? I didn't want to take the lemon bars off. <laughs> or the orange butter. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, God. that was great. And the muffin, yes. the Chinese chicken salad. So yeah. I've never been able to replicate. But her crab dip, her crab dip was incredible. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the spinach rolls. Uh, yeah. Anybody and else like to say anything about, yes. about Rosie? They're really potatoes with carrots in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And the salad at midnight with those. <laughs> I don't know. But fight. you had to have it. We got in a fight over it. I wanted coffee at midnight before the salad. And she screamed at me. Just coffee. I love it. I don't have a lot to say. Just a just a brief, um, just a brief thing. It's my thoughts when I think of Rosie. I also met her when I was very young. Um, I used to go and visit Emma by myself without my parents. You know, yeah, since I was a kid. Introduce yourself. So I'm Carrie. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm Emma's niece, and um, I have uh, known Rosie through Emma, obviously, um, since I was a little kid. I used to come out and visit Emma without my parents um, off and on since I was young. And on one of these visits, I met Rosie, so I have known her forever. Um, and I have not had her as a you know, daily part of my, my life, you know, like many of you have. But you know, out of all the people you meet all growing up, she is one of the people who has left you know, some of the most vivid memories. And like many of your vivid memories of her, you know, my, you know, overarching thing that I think of when I think of who Rosie was at heart is that she was 100% truthful about everything. Like I have never, in all the places that I've lived and all the people I have met in my almost 50 years, I have never ever met any other human who was 100% honest, no matter what it cost them. And that was, as I was telling Emma, just when we were telling stories, because um, I've been here, I, I flew in on Friday. Um, I'm from Idaho. I, I specifically came from Idaho just because of Rosie's memorial today. Um, it was important um, to be here for her. So um, the story that I was telling Emma was one time when she and I, because Emma and Rosie and I would go take museum days at a time where it was unbelievably important for me to have time away from my little toddlers and laundry and dishes. 
you know, Emma and Rosie and I would take like a Sunday or a Saturday and go to San Francisco and go to the, the museums. And Rosie always would get us special tickets um, for these museum shows. And I got in the car one day and, you know, we just jumped in the car and we were on our way and I was like, how are you? And she said, really effing awful. <laughs> and, and I was even, it wasn't like I was a kid then, I was probably 40 then. And I was like, oh, no one has ever said that. <laughs> no one, you know, everyone always says, oh, I'm fine, or everything's all right. Or you might say, mm hmm, I've been better. But she was 100% honest, and she went on to tell me exactly what was going on. And I thought to myself, like, that was such a wonderful, honest, like, uh, flattering thing for somebody to say that they, you know, they trust you to, to have a real view into their life and what's going on and, you know, to want to spend the time to get to know you and look at you and see you and talk to you instead of just the, we're just going to gloss over everything and just say the words that we're all supposed to say. I've never met anyone else, anyone else <coughs> like that. And so I, and I of the person who was raised, you know, you, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all, and you know you you, you keep all the, the stories that you might not want to tell pressed down. That's how I was raised. So when I think of her, I think I want to be more like her. So um, I I endeavor to to be more honest and open because of what it felt like when Rosie was that honest and open with me. So that's oh, what that's I sweet. Obviously, I could go on and on. I was the one that married her in Pinus. So, and the wedding was very interesting over at Murphy Park. Um, Rosie helped support our, our orphanage. Most people don't realize that the Center for Creative Living has an orphanage in Ghana. And I was honored four years ago for it to be named the Dottie Boone Village. And um, I called Rosie and I said, you know, we've got these kids. And uh, I was just told that what is happening is that they have a hard time getting fresh milk. And they're thinking of buying a cow. And she said, how much is a cow? And I said, $500. And two days later, we had a $500 check in the mail. And a cow named Rosie. <laughs> and um, she went and saw Hamilton. And she loved Hamilton. She said, I want you to go, and I know you can't afford it. And, check for $500 came to go see Hamilton. And um, she has done that. When we, were, we put a solar system in the, the, in the orphanage, the kids, but they didn't have electricity. And she helped us uh, through, and I can't remember the name of the company, that uh, got uh, solar lights so that they could do homework at night. And it was almost to the point that I didn't want to say, Oh, particularly what we needed, but I'd just be talking. And she sent about, coats and, and yeah, she sweaters sent, and stuff. She sent us coats and she sent us That sweaters. was for the kids on the creek. When, um, Chris, uh, three years ago, we found out that there's a lot of homeless kids that live at the, at, at the creek. And we, we had a Christmas for them. And there were 30 kids that had never had Christmas before. And it was such that if you were particularly light-skinned going down to the creek, you never saw the kids because the parents were told, tell the kids to run because they were afraid that uh, CBS would take them away. Uh, so we, uh, April was part of this, and my dear friend April was part of this, and we wrapped, we wrapped more presents, and they took them down, and these kids kind of hardly didn't even know what to do, done wrap presents. And Corky sent, uh, Corky, see I'm doing the same thing, Ella. Uh, oh, Rosie uh, bought jackets and shoes and socks for the children of the creek to help their, to help their Christmas. Uh, a lot of these things she didn't ever brag about. She just did. And that's part of Rosie being herself in, in such a miraculous way in, in, in my life. Uh, I was one, just the opposite. Uh, I was at her party one time, 
and she just got mad at everybody and said, I want you all out of here. I'm sick and tired of all you people, and I want you out of here right now. Go. And I got up and left. And all of a sudden, she comes running out of the house, and tears streaking down her face, and she said, but I didn't need you. <laughs> and I said, you said everybody. And she said, Dottie, you've never been an everybody to me. Which is one of the sweetest things that, you know, she could have said. Because we, we just had that kind of, as I said, over all these years, we just had that kind of relationship. When Corky and I got married, she flew out from uh, New York to be here for the wedding. And I thought that was really, really important for both of us. So for me, I, I was kind of like uh, on the other side with Rosie, where there were so many sweet things that she did. Just, just, just sweet things that you wouldn't expect because she was this very strong. I've got myself together, and I can, I can handle my life. And then I kind of was lucky enough to be one of the people that she would talk about when she wasn't being able to handle her life. So it's, it's uh, for me, Rosie was a, such a strong part of my life. Uh, and today, I was talking to somebody who had lost a son through suicide. And she said, you know, don't say that people have chosen to commit suicide say something that lets you know that that energy that is still there. I thought, well, that's interesting. In other words, their energy is still here with us. They still love us and we still love them. We still love, them. We still love Rosie. She's not gone. She's just in a different dimension. And for me as a minister, that's what I think of. And I happen to be a minister of a church we don't believe in hell, because I know some people would say, I know where Rosie went. No, she didn't. <laughs> She's wonderful in, in spirit. Now, I hope that you get a chance to read some of these letters. The one that I just love and, uh, is by Richard. And uh, they're in here alphabetically. So uh, Richard Dorsich. He's second. It, it was just... A wonderful, wonderful letter that I don't know why, but it's not in mine. <laughs> oh, here I got it. Wait a minute. Wait here. Thank you so much, Brooke. I'm looking at the front of each page and went. And uh, no, I, 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 no, I don't. Thank you. I'll take yours. I start out on page three. <laughs> with Red Rose Ellen was always with me. I love that. And if you get a chance, uh, Richard was one of the young people that uh, Rosie had uh, taken uh, in. And, uh, uh, and I love this. It says, what I soon learned was being housemate, friend, and adopted family member of Rosie's put me in rare company. Rosie didn't have a lot of friends, but if you could handle her sarcastic wit, brutal honesty, and her intolerance to hypocrisy, she was one of the loveliest, kindest, and most genuine people you would ever meet. I think you all got that today. She was a fantastic woman. Okay, are you ready to eat great food, macaroni and cheese? And, the way uh, Rosie made it. <laughs> <laughs> the way Rosie made it. It's exactly as she made it. It's exactly as she made it. If it's ruined, it's because of me, not her. <laughs> That's her salsa in there, too, that gift that, oh, she, you did that, that. she made. Oh, yeah. good, I love that. Oh, uh, sure. Should we do the toast, Jeremy? Yes, well, it, it, now I'm going to turn it back over to the other parts of the Boone family. Cool. Yeah, I'll say Okay. Okay, so here we go. Go ahead, Grandma. Is that the hat? This is the hat my younger uh, Boone kids gave me. Um, so Brooke brought some lovely champagne glasses and they're in the back. We're going to fill them up um, with champagne and my, or whatever you would like. Um, there's water in LaCroix in the cooler and um, I think there's soda in the warehouse. And um, I think that my mom, Kim, is going to lead us in a toast. So, if, and then you're more than welcome to keep your glasses. And once again, we do have some ashes up here in tiny little bottles as well. 
So let's grab a glass and then we'll, we'll do that. And then let's we'll do it. Let's do it all.